mic around to you. How's everybody doing? Good, how are you? Good. 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 It's kind of a two-part question for you. Uh, potentially your last game at Sanford Stadium this past Saturday. What was it like to have guys like Nolan and Jordan there before the game? Like how much of an emotional boost that was? And then uh, just what's your favorite moment at Sanford Stadium? Uh, Saturday night was very emotional. Uh, I uh, dropped a couple tears different times of the day. Um, first one was during a religious service, just the message uh, T set hit us with. Um, seeing my parents, seeing my family, and then right after the, right after the game, just dapping everybody up and just embracing embracing those guys and having Nolan and Jordan uh, back. It was it was huge. Um, just just always see those guys, not even in, in a football setting, just like when you see them, like when they come back to town, just just sit down and talk with them, just just ask them how it's going at the next level and just pick their brains a little bit. But um, my favorite memory, hmm, probably, probably just dapping everybody up after that last, just knowing that was my last time and just enjoying it pre-game, during the game, just actually getting the younger guys to go out there and play and, and dominate and just having fun, honestly. Being from Tennessee, did you grow up a Tennessee fan? You know, what was your involvement with the balls during the recruitment process? And, you know, just thoughts on going back to your home state? Um, I wasn't a huge Tennessee fan growing up. Uh, my family is. I, I, was a, I was always a basketball fan, so I was a Kentucky guy. That was the, the huge John Calipari era, John Walls, the Demarcus Cousins, all those. Um, recruiting process wise, uh, that's uh, that was uh, Butch Jones and Jeremy Pruitt. Uh, wasn't really highly uh, touted when I went up there a couple times. Stayed up there eight hours one day. Didn't really even get looked at. Uh, come down here, going into my senior year, get an offer from here, get back on the interstate on three sixteen. Then Jeremy Pruitt calls, so. <laughs> It wasn't really a big uh, relationship with them then, so. Zion, I'm a guy like Nazir Stackhouse. I mean, first of all, being able to make an interception last week and then a sack this game to both of them swinging the tide uh, in your favor, but also a guy you've been here with a long time, another guy that was celebrated alongside with you. How much does he mean to you, both being able to play with him on the field as well as just a friend off the field? That's my dog, man. Just just knowing Nas and knowing who he is, knowing what he's overcame, uh, knowing, knowing knowing what he's overcome over his his time of recruiting process in high school, coming to Georgia. A lot of people don't know Nas has narcolepsy, so he not he like he's, he's not allowed to drive. It's very hard for him to stay stay active and stay awake. Um, but it's it, just just the daily grind that he has to go through just to just to be a dominant player. I, I love Nas, and I tip my hat to him. Um, today, the offensive line was named semifinalist for the Joe Moore Award. You've been up against the line going back to the spring. What is it about this line that stands out and has made it you know, one of the top lines in the country? Well, they should be a three-time Joe Moore Award winner. I'm just going to throw that out there. But um, th those guys, they, they really they, they pride themselves on that, um, on being the best offensive line in the country, which I believe. Um, I, like I said, they're 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 very like it's just a, a very tight knit group. They're gonna they're gonna work their tails off every day. They're gonna come give you everything they got on Saturdays, and uh, I wouldn't rather have a better group of guys on my side. <coughs> yeah, Kirby uh, didn't seem too happy with how practice went today. Just as one of the, the veterans, the leaders of this team, what does I guess tomorrow look like for you, and make sure it doesn't happen again leading into the game this weekend. Uh, just setting the, setting the tempo. Uh, me said um, smile and with Pop being down. I know that's a that's a huge hit for the defense. So we have to pick it up. Um, really, just trying to trying to be more vocal. Trying to be that guy that picks guys up morale, that picks pick guys uh, energy up. And just just trying to be the leader that the team really needs right now. Going in, I know going into uh, Neyland, we're going to need everybody. Every every person that's going on the trip is going to be uh, very pivotal. So just gotta. Buckle down and have a good Wednesday. It, you know the legend of rock, rock song, but the, the average recovery time for Georgia players dealing with that tightrope surgery has been eight weeks, and then he comes back in twenty six days. When, when did you first start noticing that? Hey, you know he's he's getting pretty close. He's out here and. Were you ever surprised? Is there any you guys talk about it like in the diner when you're in there, 
Eden and Lesky, you believe this guy? I mean, it's just how Brock's been since he's been here day one. He's not going to let anything hold him down. I mean, he's not let anything hold him back. So he's going to work his tail off to get back, and he loves playing football. So. Tennessee's offensive line is also up for the Joe Moore Award. Just in getting ready for this game, what stands out to you about the challenge you guys on the defensive line are going to be up against? Just how consistent they play with, at their tempo. Um, you know, they're they're doing different things. Uh, they might pull a guy this play. They might drop back and just and cover. I mean, I can drop back and cover, but drop back and uh, pass protect. And, they, and they're they're very they're, like they can they can withstand uh, for drives. And they're just a very uh, tightening group as well. Like I know a couple guys that go to Tennessee, Tyler Barron, they, he talks about how, how, how well they are um, how, how, like, during practice and stuff like that. So just it's going to be a, a big time matchup, I feel like. You mentioned uh, Pop's voice being an absence in the locker room. And on Saturday, it was an absence too. But enter CJ Allen. I know that Smile's been there and done that. He's But on the field, just being on the field with him, what was his voice like? And uh, was it like confident, strong, like he was getting everybody in the right spot? Because he had a big game. I was just wondering. CJ Allen? Yeah, if he was just like, Super comfortable, and he's already can be step up and be that guy. Uh, he's very mature for a freshman, man. Uh, he kind of gives me flashes of the Kobe Dean, uh, just because he's that guy that's in the meetings. He's taking he's taking every note from from punt to PBR to if he's on KOC or KOR, he's taking every note to to know where he needs to be. Um, it's the same way for defense. Like he knows every check. He knows he's he's like he's very vocal with it. He's going to be a very good linebacker in the system. Sion, uh, we've talked to Coach Smart a good bit about how effective Tennessee's run game is. What stands out to you about the way they run the ball, and what do you guys have to do to try to slow them down? Uh, just the way they can go from running the ball to getting it out of the getting out of the, <coughs> the edges to to the guys like Squirrel, to guys like um, uh, Ramel. Um, they they do a, they have a very good balance, um, and, and they play good com complementary football. They they know how to run the ball, they know how to pass it. So we just got to be able to. Uh, get our cleats in the ground and play football. Any more questions for Zion? All right, Zion. Thank you, sir. Thank, Thank you, Zion.